What's going on YouTube? Sean here and welcome to another edition of After the Movie. I'm currently on my lunch break right now and you're probably wondering why am I not recording this with my buddy Cody? Well, that's because when it came to Batman Forever, it, they had the one screening on Sunday. I was just too sick to go. I was just miserable from Friday. Based, even till now, I got all that sinusy shit where it's all that mucusy stuff that just <clears throat> and phlegm that gets stuck in your throat. It's just burning, and then you just can't even breathe out your nose. I'm still recovering from that, but I will be seeing Batman and Robin tonight with Cody. I told him to watch Batman Forever beforehand, so maybe be, uh, <clears throat> I might even re-record this with him before the movie. And then we can do a second one after the movie or something like that. But I've seen Batman Forever so many countless times over the years that <clears throat> I basically know the movie by heart. You get the credits, all the names pop up, and then all of a sudden Alfred's like, Can I persuade you to take a sandwich? I'll get drive through. Do, 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 do. So, Batman Forever, this is the third film in the Warner Brothers Batman quadrilogy of the <clears throat> from the 1989 to Batman and Robin, obviously. And after Batman Returns came out, a lot of parents were mortified by some of the shit that happened in that movie, which is what I kind of love about that movie. Like, it gets so morbidly dark and off the wall, kind of crazy messed up, that it eventually led to them doing this movie, Batman Forever, which is a more mainstream, more happy-go-lucky. It's, it's a hilarious movie. You have Jim Carrey, who just kills it as the Riddler. Absolutely funny. It's just Jim Carrey kind of being Jim Carrey, but it's Jim Carrey at his peak, Jim Carrey, so... You gotta love it. And Tommy Lee Jones is hamming it up to level 50 as Two-Face. Like, honestly, level 100. As hammy, there's no scenery left in the movie that isn't unchewed by the combination of Jim Carrey and Tommy Lee Jones. Those two are having such a good time. Tommy Lee Jones is constantly like, hee-ha, hee-ha. Uh, in terms of a characterization, there's so many ridiculously dumb things in Batman Forever, but <clears throat> I absolutely love this movie. In fact, I may love this one more than Batman Returns. This is the one I... When I was younger, like, a lot littler this was my personal favorite batman movie i always thought about this movie i thought of the seal kiss from a rose song i'm not gonna sing it for you as much as you all want to hear uh <clears throat> my grovelly voice sing it but yes i remember that i just remember watching the shit out of this one when i was little and always wanting to watch this one in batman 89 of course you have batman and robin which is still the worst of them all even as a guilty pleasure film it's still like the one i enjoy watching the least um so you got that one so basically what happened was, after Batman Returns was as morbid as dark, Tim Burton was set to go make another movie. Uh, this time we are going to do Two-Face, and then the studio's like, yeah, that's a great idea, Tim. Yeah, um, Tim, we didn't make as much money this time around. Tim's like, you guys don't want me to do this again, do you? He's like, no. All right, well, I'll just, we'll have you be a producer, Tim. Uh, let's get this guy who made The Lost Boys, Joel Schumacher. He's made some dark, edgy stuff, and then Joel Sch Schumacher comes in. Very nice, pleasant guy. He gets a, he got a ton of crap for Batman Forever and Batman and Robin, but you know what? I st Joel Schumacher has made some crappy movies, but at least he's a nice guy about it. At least he, you know, he apologized for it. He just wanted to make something more <clears throat> kid-friendly. Batman and Robin, that's a pure studio film right there. That's not, like, any of his real vision coming through so yeah batman forever was a risk at the time i'm gonna roll down the windows it's kind of hot out here but yeah so batman and robin was or batman forever is kind of risky at the time because nobody really had anything to do with it because they're just thinking oh no we can't do this but then obviously they got all the big stars in there they made it more campy <clears throat> closer to the 60s show you have lines like holy rusted metal batman and yeah also before i uh go on i know uh Someone wanted me to mention a little bit more of the history. Originally, before the Riddler was cast, I think Robin Williams was considered for the role. So, there's that. Um, I forget who it was who wanted me to say. I think those Big Jack films wanted me to mention that. But yeah, so, before we get into the... <clears throat> before they went and made this one, a lot of actors remembered. Of course, they brought in Jim Carrey, who the year prior was just a megastar at that point. You had Ace Ventura. You had Dumb and Dumber. You had The Mask. Like, all back to back to back. And then you just go straight into Ace Ventura 2. And then Batman Forever. That is like five stellar fucking movies in a row. Then afterwards, he made The Cable Guy, which is one I love. Um, <clears throat> and then he did Liar Liar right afterwards. So Jim Carrey was like on a hot streak of movies at the time. He's like the... He's one of the main things to love about this film. Like, his take on the Riddler is absolutely hilarious. Like, more Frank Gorshin over the top cackly. And honestly, he's creepy as... He's he's really Jim Carrey and Cammy as, <clears throat> you know, the Riddler. But when it comes to Nygma, there's people that are out there just like that. And you just, like, you get that feeling. It's just like, you were supposed to understand. I'll make you understand. Yeah, it's kind of one of those things. But anyways, with, in terms of Batman Forever, so <clears throat> with Tim Burton gone, well, I mean, he's a producer, but not really the director. 
Michael Keaton was immediately gone afterwards. They were offering him so much money and he turned it down. He's like, no, this is not a good idea. So no Michael Keaton this time. So they recast Batman. So then they bring in Val Kilmer, who honestly, I actually like his Batman voice per se. Like just when he, like when he's in the role, like Val Kilmer's a pretty underrated Batman, I think. Uh, when I was younger, I liked his Batman voice the most, obviously until they, in terms of live action, you got Conroy's. Affleck said the modulator, which kind of fixed that whole <clears throat> voice changing thing all together and of course George Clooney is just George Clooney like I don't see a difference between him his Bruce Wayne and Batman but yeah so Val Kilmer was Batman in this time around then we have Chris O'Donnell as Robin <clears throat> Chris O'Donnell as Robin though like I don't get why Bruce Wayne would adopt like a clear college student like in his mid-20s so it's like oh all the charities and social services and that when Two-Face comes in and kills Robin's parents and I'm just like why would Bruce Wayne adopt this person like he's mid-20s he's an adult it would have made more sense if it was a kid but no they're uh they're pretty much almost like the same age and robin looks like he could kick the crap out of batman i'm sorry but val kilmer great actor but he does not look imposing at all in the bat suit in fact it doesn't help that they have the nipples on the bat suit too because i'm just like why are they there why didn't somebody just go okay joel no nipples on the bat suit all right and Joel should have been like, okay. Because, like, Joel Schumacher behind the scenes, such a, like I said, he's a really nice guy and all, from what I've seen. Um, seems very friendly. People like to work with him. But he's just like, action, we're making a toy commercial. People, remember, it's a cartoon. So he kind of got that direction. So you got something in there. Like, Batman Forever is kind of that weird hybrid movie where it's got elements that are truly spectacular. Like, I like this. Like, when it gets serious, it actually gets really, really good. Like, when uh, <clears throat> there's the image of Robin's parents, Dick Grayson's parents, falling to their death. And just like just the directing right there is really solid from Joel Schumacher. You got the uh, <clears throat> scenes where you just get you don't actually see them hit the ground, but you see the impact and like the expressions on like Kilmer's face. It's done in slow motion. Although Tommy Lee Jones is hamming it up so much, he kind of kills <laughs> the mood for it too. Um, he hams it up to God knows how much. Um, <clears throat> but like st that scene was actually directed really well. Other things you got in this movie. So Selena Kyle's gone this time around. I guess they were gonna make us Catwoman. <clears throat> spin-off movie but they ultimately never did which is really sad because i was really hoping to see michelle pfeiffer back although they do reference her when dr chase meridian you remember that character from the comics actually i think she was in for a few and then everybody completely forgot about her which is understandable i remember i had the biggest crush on nicole kimmon when i was younger like it was like my first movie crush was nicole kimmon in this movie i felt i felt like really strange tingly feelings in me when i watched her in this film because she was going this is like a movie almost like geared towards kids but there's a lot of sexual innuendos in there, um, especially with Nicole Kidman. Like, she wants to fuck the shit out of Batman in this movie. Like, she's just, her whole personality is just horror. <laughs> just complete, just like, oh, black rubber. She's just, like, saying everything. I'm like, oh, my God. Like, young me is just listening there and just like, oh, my God, it's so hot. Uh. Nicole Kidman looks hot as hell in this movie, too. So that's another big takeaway I had from this movie was just Nicole Kidman. Mm. In terms of a character, it's kind of lacking, but... Ooh, damn, she fine. Um, <laughs> so yeah, anyway, so this one, <clears throat> I liked it. It gets it gets a little bit campier in areas. There's some legit, really funny, like like cheesy moments that I absolutely love in Batman. For honestly, sprinkled throughout the whole movie, I really find it to be quite entertaining. Even though, as much as I like Batman Returns, I think I like Batman Forever a bit more than Batman Returns. That's just me. I still like Returns a lot. It's not as much. I don't like this one as much as '89, but I definitely do like Batman Forever. It's one I have fond memories of. Um. The Riddler, though, the Riddler's entertaining. Tommy Lee Jones is Two-Face. There's some real problems with his characterization. Uh, for instance, one of the things about Two-Face is he leaves things up to chance, like 50-50. This time, he's deliberately flipping the coin to get the results he wants. He's just a cackling nutball. So, Tommy Lee Jones thinks he's in the 60s show. Jim Carrey's just chewing as much scenery. Val Kilmer's taking this seriously. Nicole Kidman knows what she's at. Like, some people are just, like, some of them are taking it seriously. Some are in a campy TV show. Michael Goff god bless his heart god bless his soul um rest in peace he's still taking this stuff awfully seriously and he's still phenomenal as alfred <clears throat> like i said the movie's got some weird elements of like 50 50 like it's partially dark and serious and it's partially like lighthearted and campy but it's overall fun time uh there was a deleted scene which i don't get why they would have cut this from the movie would have made the movie better where bruce wayne's like experiencing flashbacks of with his parents dying and he's imagining different things of like the whole scenario where it's just like the toll is taken on him like he's feeling kind of like these repressed memory guilt and then we come to find out the truth that when he opens up his like in the deleted scene it explains this all where he looks at his dad's journal and finds out that he 
made him like he finds himself responsible for his parents' death because he's the one who wanted to go see the movie. Like, his father canceled an appointment, and that's ultimately led to his parents' death. So he's dealing with the guilt, <clears throat> and then he faces why he became Batman in the first place, and there's, like, this giant bat thing, that creature that comes out, and I'm like, holy shit, like, I think it was Stan Winston who made it. They show bits of it, but they don't really. Uh, funny lines sprinkled throughout. Like, Jim Carrey, like I said, is absolutely hilarious in this thing. Caffeine will kill ya! Surf's up, big kahuna. Ooh, you may have to settle for the bronze. <laughs> oh, God. Jim Carrey and Tommy Lee Jones, they're so fucking funny in this movie. Like, I can't stop laughing hysterically whenever I see them in this movie. What else can I say? Chris O'Donnell, he's, he's fine in this movie, but <clears throat> I don't get why Batman would adapt, adopt someone like this age. It just kind of, like, irks me a bit. It, it just, it doesn't make sense to me. Um... What else can I say about Batman Forever? Um, whew, it's getting warm in here. I turned off the AC, but man, I'm starting to sweat. Um, it's got some fun action sequences. It's definitely more upbeat and positive. Gotham City still looks cool. It's not as good as uh, the Burton films quite a bit. It's definitely more upbeat. There's a lot of fucking statues like sprinkled throughout the city. There's a lot of weird stuff too. The musical score by Elliot Golgenthal or whatever... This score is actually a really good substitute for what Danny Elfman did. Do, 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 do. Music is still great as always, although some of it gets kind of wacky when it comes to the Riddler. <clears throat> so I do like the score for this film. I think the Batman movies have consistently had good music throughout. It's one of the consistent things about that franchise. You're going to get some good Batman music. Danny Elfman's music is fantastic. L.A. Golgenthal, I think that's how you pronounce his name. <clears throat> his score is great. And obviously Hans Zimmer's music is great as well. And Shirley Walker too, can't forget her. Even the 60s show, whatever, whoever composed that has some great stuff in there. Uh, one other thing, just just little dumb moments. I can honestly do commentary over the whole movie and just pinpoint little moments that just I just question. For instance, Batman is in the courtroom. Like there's a part where Batman is no longer this mysterious figure. He's just out in the open. There's like, he's somewhat there, somewhat not. There's a literal scene in this movie where they briefly gloss over the origin of Two-Face, not played by Billy D. Williams this time. Sorry, Billy D., but at least you got to play him in Lego Batman, so at least that was cool. Yeah, so... <clears throat> Batman, like, they're like, Harvey Dent, Gotham's sworn district attorney, gets sprayed with acid, and Batman's in the courtroom, although Batman tried to say, why is he in the courtroom? I don't know, it's just funny. And then you also go to show that, like, the GCPD gets more useless as they go along. Um, I guess one other, <clears throat> one or two other cheesy moments I can talk about one thing I do like about this one, Batman is not a killer this time around. He's feeling, they actually do more for Batman's character this time around than the previous film did because they actually try to have a bit of an arc for Batman. Oh, geez. I heard a loud kaboom. Okay. That kind of scared the shit out of me. But yeah, um, where was that? <clears throat> so anyways, with Batman's character, they actually try to do more with focus on him more than the previous two films. Obviously you got the villains of that involved, but they try to focus more on Batman per se this time around, which I do like. Um, I, I just like how, like, Robin's, like, dealing with his guilt. He wants to kill Two-Face. And then Bruce Wayne's, like, explains, like, the guilt that you'll face over killing people. So this is, it's still a continuation, but it's actually acknowledging the faults of the past about how, like, taking a life will uh, really take its toll on you. And you see Val Kilmer orchestrate that well in terms of his acting. Uh, other moments that I do love, it's um when the Riddler's signal goes off, they're like, who's doing this? The Riddler. Batman goes in and gives a thumbs up. I love that little turn where he just turns around. He just uh, gives the thumbs up. I love that. Oh, I got to turn on the AC. I'm dying in here. Um, so you may hear some excess sound. Oh, that feels good. That feels good. Oh, sorry. Um, <clears throat> I love the little thumbs up turn around. And another thing I like too is uh, is the social... Co is kind of like it's a little bit ahead of its time in terms of what it predicted because Nygma has these, this plot to like put a box on every TV in town and become Gotham's cleverest carbon-based life form. So he has this little plan to put these boxes on all the all these little boxes and like they'll be feeding with him credit card numbers, bank codes, sexual fantasies, and little white lies. I'm like, oh my god, that is the internet. It literally, it, it's kind of amazing how this, Jim Carrey in a way predicted a lot of things in his movies. Like, Nygma's box is basically the internet. Like, it, think about it, it's got all this information on you, it feeds you with all this information. Like, he has access to all this stuff. So, it's kind of him predicting the internet in a way. And then also, unlike the cable guy, the same thing is like, soon you able to play uh, Mortal Kombat with, in Vietnam with a friend, which you can do. It's kind of crazy to think about, because I actually did play Mortal Kombat online with my friend who went to Nam at one point. So, 
uh, one thing, like like I said, Jim Carrey's characters, in a way, predict to the future. So I think that was kind of neat. Uh, the final battle is just kind of like this little death trap. You got a little bit of mystery going on there. Batman trying to do a little bit of detective skills in there, which I liked. I think Val Kilmer is still pretty good in the role. The ending is just kind of like one big, uh, <clears throat> one big death trap thing, like in the '60s show. And it's Jim Carrey's wearing these ridiculous out silver outfits as the Riddler, and I just sit there, just I laugh every time. I can't take any of this shit seriously. And um, Batman goes in there with the sonar thing. Robin teams up, still has the nipples on the suit. Blah 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 blah. <clears throat> Batman saves him and uh, Chase Meridian. Chase Meridian's never seen again after this movie, mind you. And neither is Val Kilmer for whatever reason. I guess they just try to rush the next film out after this. So they go in there. They do their thing. He stops the Riddler. Two-Face is going to kill him. He throws some coins in the air. Basically lets Two-Face fall to his death instead of just kind of saving him. So sorry, Two-Face. I guess you're dead too. And then we get the final moment that I do love in the movie too. Like Riddler's just trapped in Arkham Asylum. He's like, oh, I'm Batman. So finally they don't kill one of the villains off. So I appreciated that. Um, but Jim Carrey obviously wouldn't want to do sequels afterwards. Although it would have been cool. I really wish we would have gotten after this one. Like, I, after Batman Rob, I really wanted that Batman Triumphant movie, which sounds amazing. It's like such a missed opportunity that we never got. If we would have got that, I would have been all in for it. So, yes, we got that. Um, <clears throat> Riddler's there. Then at the end of the movie, we see Batman and Robin running towards the camera with the signal behind them. I like that bit, too. I know it's cheesy. I know it's hokey, but I appreciate it. It, it makes me smile. So... Yeah, I think that's all I can really say about Batman Forever off the top of my head. I've seen this movie so many times. Uh, I can quote so many of the lines. Two-Face cracks me the fuck up. He's not really an intimidating villain. It's just hilarious. Uh, Jim Carrey's Riddler, I absolutely love. Although he stole the Riddler persona from somebody because he's got that little thing that just goes like no and then question mark. So whoever this other guy is in this universe was the Riddler that created things. And I love the subtleties to Jim Carrey's performance. Like, for instance, when Bruce Wayne's at that little ball with Chase Meridian. And he's just trying to mimic him in every little thing. Every time I see this thing, I go, oh, that reminds me of that little ball at the end of the movie. Or like that little uh, Enigma Tech party. There is a scene where Batman bursts through the roof. And then the, this one extra always makes me laugh so fucking hard. Batman crashes through and he's like, Batman! Eh! I don't know who this guy is. I don't know what his story is. I watched the commentary. I was hoping Joel Schumacher would comment on it. But no, we never even got that and I'm so disappointed I want to know who this guy who just goes Batman eh. you'll know it like when Batman bursts through the roof of that building the guy points out he's like Batman eh. oh oh that reminds me too of the really bad extra actor at the beginning of the movie the security guard just like oh my shoes are melting oh no it's boiling acid oh man <laughs> I just want to rewatch the movie again because I just have so much fun with this. One. I need to do a commentary with some people. We all just sit back and watch Batman Forever together. Um, <clears throat> soundtrack is good. Some classic '90s hits in there. Seal Kiss from a Rose. The music video makes no sense to me, but I just think just its association with this masterfully crafted movie just cracks me up. So yeah, um, Batman Forever. It is dated. It is cheesy. I think Honest Trailer said it like best of all. It's the worst movie you've seen like 50 times. I don't agree with that sentiment, but it definitely is like a movie you can pick apart, but it's one I grew up on. I have a lot of nostalgic attachment to this. I find it very entertaining. I can see why some people don't like Batman like this, but like I said, there's great elements in there. There's some goofy comedy. Uh, the nipples on the bad suit are bad. I could rip these movies apart, but I just can't in my heart do it. Like I know there's some movies I can just like shit on entirely. I just can't do it. Even as bad as Batman and Robin gets, I find it hilarious. And same with Batman Forever. So take it for what it's worth. I love Batman Forever. <clears throat> Don't care what anybody says. I think it's amazing in like its own sort of unique way. You, you know you know what I mean? It, it's just a fun time to be had at the movies. So anyways, let me know in the comment section down below what you thought of Batman Forever. Do you like this movie? Do you dislike this movie? Is this one of your favorites? Is this one of your least favorites of the Batman franchise? Let me know so that we can talk about this some more. Hit that bell for notifications. Hit the subscribe button. Come back later on today or possibly tomorrow. I don't know. I'm just going to upload this right when I uh, get home from work. And uh, <clears throat> watch as we talk about Joel Schumacher's masterpiece, Batman and Robin. So thank you so much for watching, everybody. I'll see you all next time. Take care now. Bye-bye then. And uh, riddle me this, riddle me that. Who's afraid of the big black bats?
Okay, that's that's enough. Go check out Batman Forever.